A very warm welcome to all of you. This is the first class of the semester and today we'll be talking about scalars and vectors. So if you have seen your syllabus, the first topic that is there is vectors. So before we go into talking about vectors, let's talk about scalars and vectors. What are they? What is the difference between them? This is just a kind of a revision for the things that you have learned in your higher secondary. So I have prepared a small presentation for all of you. Let's go ahead. So before we talk about scalars and vectors, we need to know something which is known as physical quantities. So what are these physical quantities? These are nothing but the property of an object or a material which can be measured or quantified. We come across many such physical quantities in our daily lives. For example, length, every day we talk about time, the temperature, distance, speed, etc. All these are quantities which can be measured and in physics we call them as physical quantities. Now, the number of physical quantities are many. So in order that we have a proper understanding of these physical quantities, these physical quantities are classified broadly into two types. They are classified into two types. One is known as scalars, the other we call them the vectors. So these are two terms which you have come across. All of you have come across, I suppose. So scalar quantities are physical quantities which have only magnitude. For example, as is shown in the slide, time, mass, temperature. These are physical quantities which only have magnitude. We don't need to specify the direction. Right, and vector quantities are physical quantities which have both magnitude and direction. You can see the gravitational field, the field lines that are there, they have a direction. If you leave any object away from the surface of the earth, they will always be pulled in radially towards the center of the earth. That's why the gravitational force is a vector. Acceleration, velocity, displacement, force, magnetic field, all of them, they have directions and hence they are known as vectors. So, the topics that we'll be discussing is a part of mathematical physics, okay? And we will be focusing basically on vectors. So, in mathematical physics, we need to represent vectors. So, how do we represent vectors? So, as you see here, a vector has a direction, it has a length. So, the length of the vector, it represents the magnitude of the vector and the arrow on top of it, it represents the direction. So in general, we represent a vector as a directed line, as an arrow. Okay, so here the vector is from A to B. The length AB represents the magnitude of the vector and the arrow is pointing in this direction means it's the direction of the vector. So in mathematical physics, we can represent the vector AB as AB with a bar on top. Sometimes what we do, we, in some books, also, vectors are represented with ball letters. So, any vector has its components. Okay. So, as you can see here, in two dimensions, I have a vector with respect to the origin, here it is B, till the point E. 
that is the vector a okay and with respect to this coordinate system in two dimensions this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis so the vector a will have component along the x-axis we call it as ax and along the y-axis we call it ay so the vector a is represented as the sum of its components ax and ay to understand it properly suppose you are standing in this point at this point b somebody is pulling you with a force along the x direction and another person is pulling you with a rope say along the y direction so which direction you will move you will move in a direction which is in between the x and the y axis you imagine a rope along this axis and a rope along this axis two persons pulling you with equal force you will move in this direction okay that means this force plus this force is equal to this force or in other words this force the resultant force is a sum of the component of the force along the x axis and the y axis this is in two dimensions now similarly in three dimensions we'll have three axes the x axis the y axis and the z axis same situation here you can imagine yourself to be standing here at the origin three ropes one along x axis one along y axis and the third along the z axis all three forces are pulling you let's say equally then you will move along this direction so any vector has its its components along different axes okay and the sum of the components gives us the resultant vector as can be seen here is shown here the vector a has three components along x axis along y axis and along the z axis so this is represented as ax i ayj and ajk here it means i is a unit vector we'll talk more about it later ax is the magnitude of the x component and i represents the direction that is along x axis similarly ay is the magnitude along the y axis and j represents the direction that is along y axis aj is the magnitude along the z axis and k is the represents the direction i j and k are called unit vectors we'll talk more about it later